This is the planet train. Here you can see the three continents where all of the history of this planet will take place. Tatslin, Koaltovan and Suzanka, or by its southern name Sejenchen, and Inun. Inun is where it all starts. The wildlife on this planet is a one dangerous, but manageable. This region of the continent is covered in lush green fields and forest. The people of this planet are a peaceful one by heart, but long ago, there was a small village to the east where a mysteries man had walked into camp, which they would later call him, the Rogue Man, aka, Riv. And he began changing everything they knew about life, and their surroundings. He started sharing new ways to farm, live, and most importantly, how to fight. Riv was beloved by all of his fellow villagers, he was helping them live longer, with new medications and healthier living practices, and simple overall continuing their ever-growing lands. As generations passed and new life was born, the robed man lived on, witnessing everything he was building around him and seeing his plan come to life. They had begun to expand their territory, and with new medication, their population could increase larger than ever before. But Riv did not want to be the man in charge he told his fellow villagers, instead, he gave the power over to a fellow man who also was beloved and trusted by all for being the strongest and kindest hunter in their village. As Riv began to form his country, he started the training of his new elite army to defend his country's lands from any threats that may come from the future. As time passed by, more and more people were beginning to be born under Riv's new reign. The way people started thinking and acting was beginning to change. As a result, people were beginning to become less peaceful and started thinking less as one village, and more as an individual. As untold generations began to pass by, new leaders would be chosen by Riv who could be controlled from the shadows and make sure that he always has a hand in the decisions of the country. Riv was waiting for the perfect moment to take power of the country he had so perfectly created with his new country growing faster and larger than he had ever expected. Everything was still going according to plan. He told the current leader to set up a delivery system of food and water to the furthest outermost villages. With this system, Riv convinced the current leader that they could grow much faster and not have to worry about crops and tilling the land, instead. They could be expanding their territory and living more carefree lives. But secretly, it was for when he made his move, that the new villages he could not reach would become dependent on the capital's farms. And he could pick and choose as which villages to keep and which to let go. As Riv was losing influence on the ever further growing regions, Riv knew that the time to take control would be soon. If he missed this chance, he might never get a better chance again. With the twelfth newest leader being in control, and being very young and inexperienced, Riv knew that his plan would all go as he had foreseen. After a few weeks of the new leader being in control, Riv was at last ready to put his grand plan into action. Riv knew for his plan to work that he would need to secure at least 55% of the entire country before it fell into complete chaos. Riv knew that the furthest out areas of the country would be lost. But this was all according to plan. Riv and a small group of men broke into the leader's manor at the last stroke of dawn. There was a small fight in the manor which ended in six of Riv's men and twenty-four of the personal guards being killed. Once the leader's personal guards were disposed of, Riv assassinated the fifteen-year-old leader in his bed. With him killed, Riv and his elite army could now march on the capital which would begin the revolution and change the fate of the world forever. With this new enemy appearing out of thin air, Riv quick began killing hundreds of people before they even had a chance to defend themselves. Most of them were people who knew too much about him, or had too much influence on the population. They began burning entire buildings and streets that opposed his way of thinking or supported old regime. Anybody that spoke out or opposed him was killed on the spot. Only a few members of the council that did not bow down, or join Riv made it outside the capital's wall. It took less than two hours before the capital was under Riv's control. But the remaining council members who wished to oppose as Riv were already dividing. 
most of them wanted to combine the standing enforcement units around the country and take down their once former friend Riv, before he even had a chance to rise. And the others wanted to hide and wait for the perfect moment to take him down. But Riv was already prepared for anything his puppets could throw at him. That's why he trained the enforcement units himself. Riv knew the enforcement units were a joke at best. They were nothing more than something to please the council. These men were barely armed, poorly trained, and few in numbers. The enforcement units, as well as the larger group of council member attacked the capital. They were wiped out in less than an hour. With the capital completely under his control. And nobody left to oppose him. He spread his troops out to take control of the remaining country. After only a week into his campaign, he had 45% of the country and was well on his way to reaching his goals. But with the delivery system down during all this chaos, villages were beginning to starve. He had no choice but issued the immediately restoring and opening of delivery system. He ordered to his men to only deliver to the villages they had captured. After that he noticed his armies were beginning to spread too thin. So he issued the ceasing of any further capturement of past territory and told them to begin restoring order. Riv did not take as much land as he had once predicted, but knew he could work with what he had, and make it better than ever before. With the news of the revolution traveling extremely slow, the outermost regions of the old country would soon fall under the effects of the supply shortages almost immediately. Some of the villages in the outer regions began using what little stored food they had saved for the winter. But due to a lack of planing, the supplies was poorly distributed and even stolen in some cases. But even with that happening, most of the villages were waiting on the hope that the capital would come to their aid, as it had did so many times in the past. But by the time they realized that no one was coming, it was too late. Several villages in the far west decided to survive instead of waiting to die. They began trading anything and everything with each other that could prolong their survival. Even with their trading, they were still drastically short on food, and new people were still going to die. If they had brought too many villages into their trading circle, the amount of people to feed would have increased to such an amount that it would have ended up killing all of them. So they had some hard choices to make if they were going to survive this coming winter. Soon a week had passed and people were beginning to panic and fall into a deep despair. Starvation was starting to set in and it seemed it was only going to get worse. After one deca had passed, ten decas equals a year, there was full on chaos. People started to turn on one another just to survive, friends and even family. The death toll was beginning to rise at a very rapid rate, and bodies were beginning stack up in villages all over. Before the Great Famine, there was over 19,000 people and growing in the outer regions, but once the Great Famine hit, by the end of the first winter, there was barely over 3,000. By this time Riv was starting to pull his country together into a united empire. Four years had passed since the beginning of the Great Famine and not much has changed. The six villages of the far west which were Mole, Tylem, Li, Jiat, Kali, and Ulam. By this point they had already been referring to each other as Westerners, and they were in dire trouble. The food reserves had long been used and hunting ground were starting to become scarce, and even fights were breaking out between the Westerners and the people of the villages that resented them. Their population had dropped from 1,000 to a mere 250. When it seemed as though all hope was lost, a 19-year-old girl named Sarah Alfond and her team had figured out how to plant simple crops and nurture them to health near the local river. With her actions, she would save the western lakes from starvation, and this is where they would begin their journey as a country. She became the hero of all westerners, some even seeing her as blessed or divine. But first they had to wait another year until the winter had passed. Near the start of the fifth year Sarah had begun planting crops, and by the beginning of fall, the western people no longer knew hunger, Sarah was seen as the savior of the western people. Even a small religion was formed around her, Luzik, but quickly grew into 25% of the population. Luzik is the religious belief of the god of divine happiness, and whenever this god is at her most happiest, she comes down to our world and blesses an individual with her holy power for the benefit of the Arene race. And Sarah is seen as that blessed soul. Later that year Sarah created the Food Guild, which has the purpose of spreading as much food to all of the six villages as possible. 
With all this success, they were hated even more by all people of the outer regions for not sharing their great success. Most people at the time knew not why the Great Famine even happened, so most saw the Westerners not as the cause, but as a contributor. As time passed the chaos in the outer regions were starting to die down and people were simply trying to survive. By the year 0007 FC, the fall of the old country, Riv had united his land, and with a population over 50,000 under his rule, he was starting to reshape his land and government from the old ways of the old country into something better. He named his new country Rivschen and instructed Fowl, which was Riv's second in command, to oversee the construction of the new farms being built around the country. While Riv was training his new army personally, it was a great time of peace which would last for another 12 years. By 0010 FC, Riv had darted construction on the inter-country roadway between the three biggest cities in his land, the capital, the central thread of the country, Ahia, a hilly area which is where some of the farms were being built and where a lot of the mines were located, and Mayan, where most of the farms were being built in an economic hotspot for fishing and trading. That same year, Riv noticed rumblings in the populace, he knew that the people were not happy with his rule, and that something more was happening, he suspected the council members that had gotten away nearly 10 years ago, but was uncertain. So Riv created the Hidden Army, HA for short, their job was to go around the streets in the capital and villages alike to find out what usually could not be found normally. They had right to anywhere and to kill or arrest anyone they suspected, except high members in the government. They reported to Slim Key, head of the HA, which then reported to Riv. While Rivston was prospering like never before, things in the outer region, now referred to as the Lost Region, had finally calmed down and seemed as though they were still very divided and spread out but they was united under one faction, or to be more precise, one man, Karu Karo, under his rule the people of the lost region, the ones that had survived this long at least, had thrown away their old names for a new way of life, to live directly off the land, not all did this but most did, Karo was a brutal man, since they had no one on the borders since the great famine, they were constantly hunted by the wildlife, but they soon learned to be hunters. This is how Karo rose in power, by being the strongest and most ruthless man in the lost region. Not only was he a brutal leader by killing anyone who stood in his way or questioned him, but also had an undying hatred for the westerners, which made the people want to follow him. Continuing on with their success, the Westerners had a population of roughly 400 people. They also with the help of Nehru and Mia Frin, a married duo of up-and-coming metal handlers, were able to cast early weak alloy surface metals called sunorks, which was soon being used for arrowheads to fend off the ever-reproaching wildlife. Though nothing to the metals casting technology of Rivschen, it was a beginning. The problem with sunorks is that it is very common, but the deposits are extremely small. There are larger veins that occur naturally, but are very rare. The westerners did not have one of these deposits in their general area. So they begun spreading out their area of control. They did this for a few reasons. 1. To find more surface metals outside their area. 2. To increase their hunting ground for more food. And 3. To provide safety for westerners who live outside the six villages. It took a following three years before they could expand out. The wildlife was simply too dangerous for Frin and his men, so they created the pack control. Westerners armed and ready to fight off any animals and defend their homes, as well as a side duty to stop anybody coming into their villages from the lost region. After two years of searching, Nehru, Mia, and 20 other men and women found a huge deposit in the northern areas near the Livesa River. They started a compound there to start mining, but work was slow. Caused by the year 0018 FC the Westerners had a population of roughly 450 people, but three-fifths of the population was still under the age of 16, so most women had to stay home and look after their kids. So Mia had the ideal of creating a new village so the workers could bring their families, they called this new village Ruxa. As time passed by, the village began to flourish, but it didn't have the same power as the original six villages. A new official name was starting to catch on. Westerners, of the Western Lakes. Things during this time were extremely peaceful for the country of Rivschen, the hidden army was extremely effective and was mopping up any unrest, the people were fearful but the land had never been better. That is up until Deca 20019 FC, the unrest in the capital had been underestimated and it grew fast within a day's worth of time. 
the capital became under heavy riots with the streets in flames and government buildings being torched. Rip went into the streets himself with his 200 palace guards and aid from the 800 city guard. It was a complete slaughter for the rioters. Over 3,000 people died during the riots and only 400 were from the Rifschen military. Afterwards Slim Key head of the HA suspected the council member from the old country that got away, but Rip demanded somebody pay for this and as such Key got 50 lashes for punishment. He was told much worse was to come next time if he let this happen again. After that Key rounded up his men and began a massive hunt for the old country rebels, OCR, with it being quite successful. Over 300 suspected members of the OCR was captured and either publicly executed or forced into slavery, this hurt the OCR extremely bad. In retaliation by Decca 30019, the OCR had taken the farms of the capital over and were threatening to burn the crops if they were attacked. But the OCR didn't know about the new farms which were completed earlier last year. Without hesitation Rip ordered Fowl to set fire to the crops and to march into the farmlands and kill everyone there. This was to prove a point that Rip was not going to stand for this. Within all the chaos, Fowl and his men had taken back the farms within three hours of the attack. Riv knew this was something much bigger the HA could handle, but Key still had to pay. He received 200 lashes and was subjected to harsh torture over the course of two weeks. He was told by Riv that this would be his last chance, any more mess ups and he would make him wish he was dead. Afterwards Key became a brutal man who showed no mercy to anyone, children, women, the elder, it did not matter. Under Key's direct control the HA would continue their attacks on the OCR from the inside out and on their families. By Deca 50019 FC over in the Western Lakes the new mining city was growing fast thanks to the help of the Frin family, people were extremely happy, unknown to the knowledge of the pack control or any of the village heads, which was the head of each of the six original villages which govern independently, was a surprise attack on the village of Lee, which was the closest village to the lost region. Either its inhabitants were raped and killed, or they were used as slaves for whatever they pleased. This was a huge issue for the Western Lakes, people were scared, afraid. So the leader of the Pact Control at the time, Armand Liss, gathered all available Pact men from around the country and headed off to take the village back with around 50 men and women. After a brutal two-day battle, Lee was under their control again, but the regioners had taken everybody with them who was still alive by the time they retreated. The village was practically destroyed, but there was one survivor. A 20-year-old boy by the name, Gazetan Ewer. He swore vengeance upon the regioners that day, in total, from the pack control and the village populace, 85 people were either dead or missing, most of the dead turned out to be children. There was a huge outcry for change, Lee was one of the six original villages and as such held much sentimental value, the village head was killed during the attack so a new one had to be picked, but most westerners simply felt sorry for the regioners, though Gasotun was not one of them, he advocated for the death of all regioners, some Muzik followers looked towards Sarah for guidance. He joined the pack control and soon after joining he ended up training harder than most men, even with the disagreement on what to do, the threat was still there. So the six heads of the six original villages came together with the people and formed a central government, the Council of Six. Ruerksa did not have a head in the council. They took control of the land, began increasing the pack control and started having them in standard training. Ruerksa was under their control as well. But the one thing that they did not have full control over was the food guild, led by Sarah. She didn't want to be bogged down or fully controlled by the council out of fear it could slow down the prosper of the western lakes, so the food guild became a part of the new western lakes but still outside the control of the council. By mid-0020 FC Slim Key had pen-pointed the cause of the riots over at the capital's farms last year, Aradon Singh Day second in command of the platoon and student of General Mimic. Aradon was stationed there at the time and he was ordered by Mimic himself to pull out hours before the riots had begun. Key told Riv this and that a second capital riot was in the works. The first son of the head of the OCR Utmore the second was in the capital gaining a huge following and building up a massive amount of stockpiled weapons. After a weeks of more being in the capital the people revolted and marched on the palace once again, but this time well armed, the city guard in the capital also revolted, they formed a massive coalition against Riv and his followers, but Riv was prepared, all of Mimic's men were fed spoiled food for a decade straight, not only that but kept in secret was foul and some 1000 men ready and waiting outside the capital, so when the battle began Mimic's men were deeply fatigued and Odmore the second and his rioters were all by themselves, 
Mimic tried to run once he realized his plan had failed but the HA was already on him. He killed himself before Key's men could capture him. Fowl marched in from the south and quickly mopped over Aradon and his platoon. The remaining men were captured and handed over to Key's men for questioning. Then the rioters were quickly surrounded, most surrendered but other fought to the end. Another massacre in the capital had occurred and anybody who had survived was enslaved. Otmor II was captured along with Aradon and tortured by the hidden army until they told everything they knew about the OCR. Otmor was imprisoned in the capital, while Aradon along with a lot of the other captives were sent to work on the national roadway as broken men. Rip was not pleased by this betrayal, so he began to completely restructure the military system. He also left Fowl in charge of the old military as Rip trained and reworked the new one. Protesters' bodies were hung up in the streets as a reminder as to what could happen. Fowl and Key began hunting down the OCR like dogs. Life became very unpleasant for people living outside the capital and Mayan. By the beginning of next year in the Western Lakes, the Council of Six had finally named its capital out of the six original villages Tylem, and soon was the second most populous city in the Western Lakes right after Chi, the city where Sarah and the Food Guild was located. It also had the second most production in the Western Lakes right after Ruurka, the village where the Frin family and the main mines for the country were located. Also one of the new council members Nolten Fared, from the village Mole was of Luzik belief. After much debate, the council decided to listen to the will of the people, and ordered the pack control to incorporate the lost region into the Western Lakes and free the people from their suffering. In addition they wanted the food guild to start making preparation to feed more people, Sarah agreed. Armand Liss and Gazatun, fifth in command started preparation for their first ever campaign into the lost regions, which would take a few years. New training and fighting styles had to be developed for fighting against people instead of animals which would take some time. By the end of 0022 FC Sarah's preparation had come to a close. Sarah, her family, and the food guild had decided to move to a new area up north where the land was more fertile and decided to place their headquarters there. Many Luzik people also followed her there essentially forming the 8th city of the Western Lakes. She asked the council for more protection from the wildlife since it was further away from everything else, they agreed but some of the council was wondering if maybe Sarah had too much power in the government but didn't want to do anything unless she acted first. Two years later the population of the Western Lakes still recovering from the attack on Lee was roughly around 350 people, the council as well as Gazatun by this time was extremely popular. He was popular for surviving the attack on Lee and being respected in pack control. But Gazatun resented the council for making it a war of peace. Gazatun wanted death and revenge which a small amount of people wanted as well. He also was promoted to second in command of the pack control for his dedication and hard work. The war either way was very popular and over those past two years they had near 100 men and women under the pack control command. Liss paraded into the capital right before heading into the lost region, many people thought it would not take long but the regioners were very spread out and used to fighting among themselves. Karu Karo was very pleased when he found out the news, he knew then his effort in Lee was not wasted and he could redeem himself on the battlefield from his loss at Lee. He fought a very nasty war, with roughly about 340 people in the lost region in total, any man of the age of 10 or above was fighting. They had weak stone weapon like spear and wooden shield and some weapons from the collapse of the old country, they wore no armor and most times went into battle shirtless. They fought unorganized and would fight to the death in small groups, they even had released some wild animals on the western army. It was a very nasty war that most who signed up were not expecting. That same year in Rivschen, the road was near completion with the path to Mayan completed, but the path to Aia was more difficult, the hills around Aia were very conjointed which made the path there take several more years than estimated. Then things took a turn for the worse. With the OCR almost wiped out with information from Otmor II and even Otmor I being killed in a surprise attack, Timor, Otmor's third and youngest son leads the OCR on a last-ditch rescue mission to help the 800 enslaved people working on the road network. Timor and Otmor were the only two left of the Moor family, the mission was a success freeing captive OCR men and as well defected Rivschen troops along with Aradon. With all the manpower they had accumulated they quickly stormed the city of Ahia. With the huge support from the population of the city they quickly drove out the soldiers on guard. When the first wave of Rivschen troops tried to take it back, they were pushed out by the overwhelming number of the OCR and the city inhabitants of Ahia, reaching numbers of near 3800. 
Soon they marched their forces outward to the nearby villages for recruits. This event was later referred to as the starting cause for the Rivschen Civil War, which was an extremely bloody war this civilization would soon not forget. The year is Deca 60026 FC, and the Western Lakes have been fighting a hard-fought war for the past two years against the Regioners. Every mile they take is stroked in blood, forest fires, wild animals, and surprise attacks. The Regioners have been throwing everything they got at them, but the Westerns held on. Battles are far and few between, any engagements are small and usually last less than an hour. Not only that but when Lys came across passive regioners of the lost region, he would send them back with some troops to the western lakes to be fed and clothed, then wait for those men to return. By these conditions, the war effort moved at an incredibly slow pace. Gasso Tun, which had been fighting on the front lines this whole time had some major upsets about how slow the war was progressing. The council had also wondered what was taking so long, they had summoned Amund and Gazatun for this, Amund explained his reasons and many had been pleased, but were still not happy with the death count, which would at this rate soon rise past 100, counting their side only, after discussing this matter, the council ordered him to end this war with a victory within the Deca, which was nearing its half point, Amund agreed begrudgingly, he and Gazatun were sent back to the front to end this war, but after two decas had passed and almost no ground was taken, they again were summoned to the council and asked what is happening. Amund explained it was simply harder than expected, they were given to the end of the year to finish this war. The council had almost no power in this position though, Amund was too popular to move him from power, and he had control over the army which most would follow him to death and back, but once by to the front, Gazatun knew Amund was going to go at his own pace and against the will of the council of six. Gazatun and five other soldiers went to find the main enemy encampment on their own. They managed to slip some information about where to hit the Western Army the best to some regioner warriors. Unaware from where the information came from, Caro summoned all available warriors and prepared for battle. Later that night, the biggest battle of the war had erupted. Things were looking in the favor of the regioners, but Amun's plan was to retreat and corner then lure them into a trap. But when Gazatun and his troops were supposed to attack the regioners, they simply stayed put. Amun was betrayed, and he and most of his platoon were wiped out. Gazatun playing the hero moved out as if he just got the order saving the remaining men. The surprised attack on Karo ended killing him and almost all of his warriors. Gazatun was the hero of the war. He took command of the army and pushed deep into the lost region, with clashes here and there, but with Karo dead, now nobody was able to stop him from simply marching into any encampment he pleased. At that same time, Esau Alphand, Sarah's husband, had been voted in by the council into becoming a member of one of the council of six, representing the village of Chi, which he had moved to and was village head. This was in order to provoke Sarah into coming under the control of the council of six. Later that same year the Rivschen civil war was in full swing and the only thing keeping the OCR from losing was the constant uprising from around the country and the hilly terrain surrounding Ahia. Along with the brave warriors led by Aradon fending off the unrelenting attacks by the Rivschen army, Riv was still in the process of building his new military structure and training them so he left Fowl in charge of the civil war. With the high hills in the eastern part of the country, and no road to speak of, it was difficult moving troops, the tide of the war swing back and forth depending on whoever was taken the defensive side. Whenever the OCR left the hilly and undeveloped parts of the east, they were quickly put down by a highly trained army led by Fowl, but when Fowl tried following them back into the forest, their formation, tactics, and their fighting style couldn't handle them terrain. It was quite the mess, not only that but Key was overstretched and was handling jobs the military should have been pre-forming. Putting down riots and securing public order, they also had to put down three revolts from rival generals and it seemed things were not getting any better. Fowl's cousin May, which was a part of the new military training Riv was developing, was sent to the front by Riv to lead a force of 100 soldiers, he wanted to test out his new tactics and thought the stalemate on the eastern front was a perfect catalyst. Once the OCR had launched their attack on Fowl, May snuck in from the back and attacked the OCR from the rear cutting off their retreat killing Aradon Singh Day in the process. At the moment Fowl had pushed them into retreat, May and her troops launched an unrelenting hail of arrows scattering their army. Fowl started chasing and killing them as they ran, together they pushed into the eastern part of the country breaking the stalemate of the war. May and her troops were called back to May in to continue their training and Fowl continued the war effort on his own but he still had a ways to go. 
By DECA 10027 FC Gazatun had reached the end of the lost region, but on his journey there he and his soldiers were extremely ruthless against the regioners, under his command there was no act that went too far, Gazatun himself had three slaves by the time he reached the end of the lost region, but once he got there, he discovered another civilization, it seemed as though the old country had lived, this was huge news, as more men and women poured into the lost regions to help the remaining regioners still around, Gazatun went back to Thailand to tell the council in person that Amund had passed and the old country had lived, he reported to Riva unknown army was spotted near the western border, Riv knew at that moment who they were, he sat in silence, then he laughed and said very clearly, our Reens sure are a lively bunch, maybe I'll see just how lively, by Deca 7, Riv had set fire to the great library which held almost all the country's technological knowledge, he also started gathering all kinds of people from around the country, May, and a third of Riv's new army refused his offer, she stated, I believe this is a perfect time to forge my own path my emperor, Riv would let them go, if not to see how far they would truly go, not only that but fighting now would only weaken him, it seemed Riv had lost his mind, he no longer cared what happened to this country and it seemed he was doing everything in his power to turn the country against him, he told his future followers, a new era awaits, it's time to forsake the chains of the past and look towards a brighter future, he and Fowl were in awe by these actions, speechless, more and more people started deserting his army as more information came in, Fowl could no longer hold the front lines and was forced to retreat, he by this time knew this country was finished, so he and his men began making preparation to leave the country for the west, on his way out they had raided the capital as well as looting the palace which was abandoned, Riv and his men had left the capital by now, the OCR started to notice the collapse of Rivschen and decided to push forward, by Deca 20028 FC, Riv, and thousands of other people had left this land for a new, by this time though Fowl had made his way back to the capital and the hidden army was nowhere to be found, but the city was engulfed in flames alongside mass looting, so he had to put it back in order, once that was done he began fortifying the city right away, May was now commanding the remainders of the new army Riv had trained himself, which still had not finished their 8 year training but was still the most elite army in the country, they numbered around 1400 troops, she was held up in the city May in claiming neutrality and denouncing their ties to the Rivschen government. By Deca 4 of the same year, Sarah had wanted the food guild itself to join the council of 6, to compromise with the council about letting the food guild fully join the western lakes, she was denied 4-2, with Esau and Ferd voting for her. Elise Alfond was highly upset by this, one of Sarah's twin daughters, her two oldest kids, Elise went to the streets and called for outcry, the people of the village she created saw Sarah almost as a goddess, if not one. Even though Luzik followers still made up a minority, they could cause some heavy damage, the people of the other villages were starting to get worried, but Sarah got her daughter under control and calmed the people, Sarah has never made a stance on whether she is or is not the blessed one, she simply lets the Luzik people believe what they want, the council did later have their concerns about that matter, they knew Sarah had too much power but feared what might happen if they did anything, the food guild was still outside of the laws of the western lakes because that they were made from the council, not only that but she controlled 89% of all consumed food in the western lakes, they used to control her protection with the pack control, but ever since the war it became harder and harder to find people, in their absence the Luzik followers which would die for her at a moment's notice stepped up and became her guardians, she is also a nation hero to the westerner people, if she wanted to, she could overthrow the council without even thinking about it, her husband knew nothing of this, the council at the time was considering if they should take action, Near year's end, the capital was under siege, but they were unprepared and had no experience with such battles, Timur wanted to see his brother again and pressed without haste, but winter was setting in, the capital had a huge reserve of food since many people from the capital were missing, the capital was the only city in the world at the time to have walls, it was for protection against the wildlife way early on before they had border guard, Fowl had asked his cousin May several times for aid during the siege, each time she refused claiming neutrality, in total, it took a whole year right before the next winter had come, before the capital fell on mid Deca 70029 FC, Fowl and his men fought to the last drop of blood, they tried to take May in, but many people were tired of this war by now, the first battle cost them over 800 losses where May lost fewer than 350 so they withdrew for now, it was a new era in this land for the people of Rivschen. 
In total, roughly 28,000 people died during this war. Otmor II was freed and wanted to lead this land to prosper, but Timur saw as though he had done all the work, May wanted to wait and see what would happen before she took action, Gaza Tun was promoted to pack lead, became a nation hero and pledged his loyalty to the council. The Western Lakes as a whole wondered what this new country was to the east and what happened to the old country. Slim Key and his men had escaped somewhere into the western areas, and the council highly suspected and feared Sarah of what she might do if the thought crossed her mind. Riv had fled to an unknown land to the east. The year is Deca 10.0029 FC, and it seems that what is the future of Enum is unclear. People will rise and people will fall. Countries will be destroyed and built. What will happen in the next chapter of Core? Only time will tell.